皆さんこんにちはここにいるのはとても光栄です I'm very honored to be here thank you for having me I study Japanese in college with the intent to be a translator or an interpreter and、uh, after college I moved to Japan and I got a job teaching so I could、uh, improve my Japanese skills I brought the Happy Warrior fan And the Happy Warrior was a nickname given to me by a wonderful fan on MySpace. Thank you. And、uh, I always want to remember to enjoy MMA and remember why I'm doing this because it's fun and I'm a Happy Warrior.、Uh, yes, I've seen Sarah Kaufman fight. I've watched her tapes. And、uh, she looks really tough, like a very tough opponent. And、um, how am I going to beat her? Well, you'll just have to wait and see.、Uh, I've designed some super attacks. I hope to show them in the fight. And.、Um, Whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm going to mix it up and try to do something unexpected. And now, joining us to the blue corner, the challenger for this title, standing at five feet seven inches. She weighed in at 133 and one half pounds. She's a veteran submission grappling standout and freestyle fighter with a record of 15 wins and five losses. She has one knockout and four submissions to her credit. Fighting out of Tokyo, Japan, by way of Wilmington, Delaware. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger, Rock. Roxanne Mataferi. And Mataferi, the happy warrior, sporting the flags of her two favorite countries, her home, the United States, and the land of the rising sun, where she's made her home for the past few years, teaching English and, of course, training in mixed martial arts. She has in her corner Kunyoku, a three time king of bank race, and really, she is one of the best female grapplers in competitive MMA. She was Naga's Fighter of the Year in 2002 and was also good enough to be invited to compete in the prestigious Abu Dhabi Combat Championships back in 2005. Yeah, definitely a world class grappler. Or more, you and I have been to Japan so many times when we work with Pride. One thing I noticed at her pre fight video is that she speaks English now with a Japanese accent, <laughs> and you gotta love that. She said she's got to do the unexpected, of course, that's the spinning back fist, the superwoman punch, and who knows what else she's gonna put out of that,、uh, pull out of that hat trick.、Uh, have fun, she's got to stay relaxed because you can't be tense against Sarah Kaufman, otherwise, you're gonna go、uh, face down to the canvas, and she's got to get this. Fight to the ground and work for submissions. She's got to do that, and I would have to say, stay on top while it's on the floor. She actually has faced the, the woman who is next in line for a crack at the 135 pound championship, Dutch submission specialist Marlos Koonen. She was on the undercard of the Strike Force show on a CBS. November losing that fight, but、uh, really now coming off a huge win, Pat, over Tara La Rosa, another woman who has always been considered one of the top female fighters on the planet, winning via split decision. Yeah, Tara La Rosa is a feared lady in this division, and Monteferi being able to beat her definitely proves that she's, <laughs> she's very relevant and can beat anyone in the world. And basically, that Marlouz Koonen was. Uh, Kunin avenged the loss of which Mortaferi beat her earlier in、That's、her career.、Right. And we've seen Kunin already face Chris Cyborg and now moving down to 135. We have the tournament coming up. Things are very interesting in the Strike Force female 135 pound division and really looking forward to an entertaining tilt here tonight. Well, the champion is looking to make a statement in this fight. She is hoping to deliver a knockout, which she hopes will catapult her and her title to the major Strike Force. Cards. You know, being a pioneer in the sport is a hard thing because there have been a lot of, you know, very talented ladies before me、um, who started to pave the way.、Um, you know, and I'm just honored that I'm able to kind of help, help keep pushing forward and keep the growth of females in the sport. It's great to see how women's, you know, women in the sport are really coming about.、Um, you know, even on Facebook, I have. You know, lately I've had, you know, even just like a 10 year old girl who's really interested in, in jiu jitsu and, and competing, and she's been asking advice on that. So it's really neat to see that, you know, the younger generation is getting involved in the sport itself. You know, I don't really feel too much pressure because I'm where I am in, in Strike Force in the organization. I think the most pressure I feel is from myself. You know, I always strive to do better in each, each performance and each fight. My prediction for the fight tonight is going to be a fast pace,、uh, a lot of punches thrown, and that title's coming back with me.
And here is the defending champion joining us to the red corner, standing at five feet five inches. She weighed in at 134 pounds. She is a powerful freestyle fighter, undefeated in her campaign, with a record of 11 wins, no losses, eight of her wins coming by way of knockout from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Tonight, making the first defense of her title, here is the undefeated Strike Force Women's Welterweight Champion, introducing Sarah Kaufman. I've had the pleasure of covering my fellow Canadian Sarah Kaufman's career since almost the beginning. She started with eight consecutive wins via form of knockout, moved on to the bigger stage of Strike Force, where she's gone three and zero, oh, including capturing the women's title. And uh, she is frustrated. She wants to make a statement in her first title defense. As we mentioned, she is looking for the knockout, and she's hoping that Montefiore will engage. Well, I think that Montefiore, in her mind, is the perfect opponent to get that, and she's going to use straight punches. Nothing unusual there. She's going to try and bait Roxanne into the brawl and let Roxanne walk right into those punches and knock herself out, basically. In her last outing, Sarah Kaufman faced the toughest test yet. A woman with a near perfect record of 12 wins and only one loss, the number one contender in the world, Takayo Hashi. But from the start, it was all Kaufman who exhibited her uncanny ability to counterpunch every time her opponent so much as blinked. It was a patient and beautifully technical effort that saw Sarah Kaufman seem a cut above her world-class opponent, easily deflecting any attempt at a ground fight and dominating things in the standing battle en route to becoming the first ever Strike Force Women's 135-pound welterweight champion. She actually attributes not finishing her last three fights to not only having the tougher opponents, but also the fact that now that she is more known, more tape on her, she can, uh, you know, definitely find a lot more to uh, be aware of, uh, Pat, as we look at the tail of the tape for this title fight. Yeah, Botafari being three years older has a two-inch height advantage. Uh, one half pound heavier for Kaufman, but she's normally probably 10 pounds heavier than Botafari. An uh, inch and a half reach advantage for Botafari, but she won't be using it in a striking advantage. We are scheduled five five-minute rounds. This is for the Strike Force Women's World Welterweight Championship, and the referee in charge is Anthony Hamlet. Ready? Ready? Let's fight! And there's Strike Force Women's 135-pound championship belts underway, and just like Sarah Kaufman expected, Roxanne Modafferi is shot out of a cannon, looking to surprise the champion, but gets put in a clinch along the fence for her efforts. Well, yeah, Ro Roxanne came out there with what looked like a Three Stooges kick. I think it was intended to be a flying knee. <laughs> it worked. It got her into the clinch where she wanted to be, though. That's right. Sarah has been in against some world-class grapplers and Misha Tate and Shayna Baszler and always came out on top. Of course, Misha Tate, one of the four ladies who will be vying for a future title shot on August 13th on the next Strike Force Challengers event coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Mata Ferry busy in the clinch, delivering the knees to the midsection. Poppin looking to disengage, wanting to separate. Now has the collar tough. Montefiore doing a good job thus far. You know, Kaufman is a very strong girl, so Montefiore being able to move her around like she is shows some good technique, some good leverage. I don't think Montefiore is physically as strong as Kaufman, so she is showing some good technique by what she's doing. Knee to the inside of Montefiore's right thigh, delivered by Kaufman. They continue to jockey. And wow, a takedown by Be careful not to give her back up coming up like that. Look at how she takes the post from her, Moro, to, to uh, try and dump her back down. Very, very smart. Coffin getting that knee underneath herself, though, as a post to save her balance. Montefiore, very smart in keeping right up against Sarah. 
almost belly to belly the whole fight thus far. I thought Kaufman was going to pop back to her feet, but credit Monteferi for controlling the champion here. In round one, scheduled for five, now in the close guard of Kaufman. Monteferi doing a superb job so far. Very good game plan, following it, executing it. Sarah thinking triangle choke with that left leg, but Monteferi blocking it. Ladies. Referee calling for action. Yeah, as a grappler, when you've got somebody on the ground, you've got to stay busy if you want to keep them there. Otherwise, hey. And then there are those people. from the uh, school of thought. And again, you know, you got to also give the grappler an opportunity to, to work. Yeah. That, that stand up was a bit quick again. Short attention span theater, my friends. Hey, hey. It's the world we live in now, dude. But... There's Kaufman now beginning to strike away at Monteferi. And this has really been to the benefit of Sarah Kaufman, that premature stand-up. And she now goes to work on Monteferi. Catches her with the left. There's no question it benefits Sarah Kaufman because Monteferi, at a distance, doesn't have a lot of head movement. And she's going to be tailor-made for those straight punches. But now Monteferi gets to, you know, over-under clinch again and up against the fence. I think here Kaufman has the choice to try and break free, although Monteferi is doing a good job staying tight on the arms. She's got to take advantage of that early stand-up by the referee. I think it was premature. I think Monteferi was at least trying to stay busy in her position. Uh, you got to give him time to work, as you said, Marl. That's again when it comes to the education. Like everyone else, referees need to do their homeworks, need to know what the strengths of each fighter is and allow them to ply their craft. But Kaufman now looking to Control, Monteferi, Monteferi looking for the Uchimata in judo. Mm -hmm. Gray finds a leg, drops to one knee. Coppin working the wizard now. Really, we're seeing a Greco-Roman wrestling match here in round one. Or a judo match because Monteferi is a brown belt in judo. Yes, she is. And also has done Taekwondo and various other striking arts, but again, prides herself on being a grappler. And that's what she's pretty much imposed here on Sarah Kopp in the grappling game. And Sarah is right there hanging in, but this does favor Marta Perry. Here's where Kaufman needs to clear out. She's not tied up that much. She can push away. Needs to do that to impose her game plan on Marta Perry. A war of attrition in round number one. Get off the cage. You can work the tie punch a bit. You feeling comfortable with that? I think she's getting tired now. Saw at the end, you're starting to take her down a bit easier. Deep breath. Stay in your game. Don't let her take you out of your game. Deep breath. Shut up. で、相手が必ずパンチ打ってくるとか入ってくるからストレートフックストレートで来るからそれのストレートフックストレートの打ち終わりに自分がストレートを出すとあとオーバーハンドを忘れないように You know, I went to Japan 31 times for Pride Fighting Championships, and yet the only term I learned was kuru kuru pa, which means crazy, because that's what everybody called me. So, Stephen, you also were in Japan. Can you translate what they were saying in Monteferi's corner? Well, I, I, I have to say that the tra the uh, corner man had a Japanese accent as well. But, I, you know, Monteferi, I think, took that first round, and Sarah, her trainer, Adam Zujak, seemed to think that Monteferi gets counted by right and left. Sorry, Stephen, but the action picking up here in round two. No problem. As Kaufman begins to pick apart Monteferi. Uh-oh. Jackson John with that one. And now Kaufman begins to unload. Monteferi does the right thing in dropping levels, but it's stuck by Kaufman. She took, she took some heavy 
shot showed a good chin. You know, Modafferi is such a pleasant girl. If you see her get hit in the face and smile, she's, she's tough. Finish your thoughts, Stephen. Uh, Adam Zuzek, Sarah Kaufman's trainer, said that Modafferi is starting to get tired, and thus Sarah got a little bit more aggressive in that punching exchange. It's going to be hard for Sarah to deliver a body punch without getting clinched, though. That's the, the problem. She's notoriously not a knee fighter to the body no, or a she, kick She needs kicker. to create separation is what she does. Yeah. She's the physically stronger of the two fighters, one would think that. Yeah, there, but there, there she is with the bully tie clinch, doing a good job of pulling the head down, cutting the angles. Nice job to switch her off the punches. Yeah, once you get certain control in stand-up positions, it's easy to break away. She's got some sort of gravitational pull that's keeping her locked up with Mata Ferry. She needs to push away, throw combos, and keep cutting angles. Mata Ferry trying for that trip again. They're setting her up for the knee, and watch that now unloading on Mata Ferry. Delivers a four-punch combination, spinning back fist by Mata Ferry, thrown haphazardly, and again the clinch. Hoffman is effective when she throws the combination. She's got to continue with that jump guard by Mata Ferry. Well, a bear could be positioned. You want to stay standing when somebody pulls the guard if you don't want to be on the ground. She needs to pin her against the cage just like that. Keep good posture. There you go. Smart move by Sarah Hoffman. And if Mata Ferry wasn't tired before, she's going to get tired if she does that again and gets suspended in the air like that. Who's, what's the onus here, Pat? Is it Kaufman control? I mean, Monteferi now looking for the uh, takedown again. But are we underestimating the power of Monteferi? Because she seems to be, again, keeping Kaufman in this clinch. I don't think it's necessarily strength. I think she's just an experienced grappler with very clean technique. She's doing a good job constantly digging inside, staying busy, cutting angles, lifting up her underhooks. Uh, you know, she's, she's really a bright girl. An octopus. There's those knees from the clinch right to the body. Adam Zuczek, her cornerman, instructing her during the break after round one. Ask her if she's comfortable in the clinch. Obviously, in that tie clinch, she is delivering some knee strikes. Mata Ferry also doing her best to try to score points with the judges. See Sarah Kaufman reaching across the front of Mata Ferry, blocking the hips out. If they can't get their hips close to you, it's hard for them to throw you. Monteferi trying to throw her anyway, but Monteferi almost ends up on the bottom. Didn't have her hips in underneath her. Easy to stop that if you can stop the hips. And the Canadian contingent beginning the chant, Sarah. A busload of students from Zuma Martial Arts in Victoria making the trip down the I-5. Of course, a chant of USA was also started moments ago from Wellington, Delaware, Roxanne Monteferi, but again, fighting out of Tokyo, Japan. Kaufman's been doing a great job of blocking Monteferi out with her head. You can see how she's constantly pinning the head, keeping Monteferi from digging inside on her. It's good positioning on her part. I'm trying to go to the body with those knees again. Really test that, oh, going to the head now, Sarah Not Kaufman. Knee to the midsection by Kaufman, getting busier with her knee strikes. Monteferi grasping, trying to stop this. Now delivers some short right hand, straight right from Kaufman. Finally, some separation with just 15 seconds left, and this is where Kaufman is in a moment. Woo! Nice play. And Kaufman doing just enough with those flurries to score points with the judges. Sarah Kaufman has been looking for the knockout, doing her best against the striker, getting on some good combos in the round when she's able to create separation. Here she is showing her hand speed, flurrying on Mataferi. Mataferi's doing anything she can to survive that one, trying to get a takedown. Also trying to land the knees to the head, land a lot of knees to the body, and then going back to the combos. Mataferi did a good job getting out of the way of a lot of them, defending them. 
Kaufman landing solid, though, there toward the end of the round. Very clean shots, and uh, Monteferri had no choice but to bail and look for the ground. Unofficial scorecard reads after two rounds. I get this uh, fight split up. I had Monteferri winning the first round. Sure, Coffin started to pull the trigger at the end of that last round. But to Monteferri's credit, she blocked a lot of those punches, but enough landed to get Sure Coffin round number two. What do you think, Coach? I'm going one round apiece. Coffin starts round three. Setting up the strikes, catches Monteferi again, but Monteferi getting busy now with strikes of her own, goes for the plump glitch. Nice quick flurry counters by uh, Monteferi, that was impressive. Kaufman's smart enough to know that she doesn't have to load up on every punch, and sometimes those five and seven punch combinations of which maybe two or three would land, they weren't loaded up, she didn't waste a lot of energy. Which would allow her to maintain the pressure. Yeah. Monteferi really being successful in keeping this into that ugly, dirty boxing style fight. A clinch war. As a wise man once said, it's bowling shoe ugly. Pause. That's good old JR, huge MMA fan. Uh oh. Nice throw. Kept working, kept working the guy. And a half butterfly. I'm surprised that Monteferi's been able to take Kaufman down as often as she has. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious Kaufman is physically stronger, but Monteferi's shown some very good technique. She's staying after it. You know, you got to hit, you know, hats off to her. Very, very good technique. And I think if Monteferi learned anything from that first round, in this position, she's got to stay busy with the strikes. She can't pause because the referee will restart them. And I think Kaufman knows that. She's trying to tie her up and get a stand up. You can see the knee wedging through now, trying to get the half guard, get me on. We talk about Monteferi's vaunted grappling game. She has trained Muay Thai in the past at the estimable Sidney on the Tom's North American Muay Thai Academy under the tutelage of uh, Mark Delagrade, one of the best Muay Thai trainers in the sport. And Monteferi continues to pick away here on Kaufman. Kick brought Monteferi down, and Kaufman's able to bounce back up. Very good job, very good job using the up kicks, up kicks keeping her back and, and getting that gap and getting her rear end up. Using those up kicks on different levels, not just to the head, to the body, and also to pop that leg out and make her lose balance. Just past the midway point of this five round title fight, Sarah Kaufman, 11 and 0, the first strike force women's 135 pound champion in the red gloves, the challenger Roxanne Monteferi in the blue gloves. Referee calls time. You can sit there, please. Real. Right there, please. Wardrobe malfunction. I don't care. Loose Cover tape. Up, Cover that up, please. Cut it. Cut it. All right, let's go. All right. I'm ready. All right. Let's play. Superwoman punch by Mata Ferry. She talks about her secret super attacks. Now. Switches her stance to Southpaw. Gets tagged by the one-two combination from the champ. Sarah was smart enough to know when she switched, she immediately pulled the trigger on the switch. And that superwoman punch of Monteferi is a good punch because she dropped Terrell LaRosa with that punch. Straight right lands by the champion. Monteferi seen enough yeah, of that. Gee. Drops down, going for the takedown, stuffed by Kaufman. But again, Monteferi able to clinch, able to tie up the champion. But finally, Kaufman exhibiting some of her strength, twisting her to the fence, and now Monteferi turns it around again. A lot of attrition along the cage in this fight. You know, both going to the head plumb a lot during this fight. If you wonder, because I fought a guy with cornrows one time, it gave me extra traction in the uh, in the plumb, Moro. Interesting. It does help. Why you're one, that's why you're quickly becoming one of the best analysts in the sport, Mr. Bertin. <laughs> <laughs> the pad system is full ladies. fact. Final 45 seconds of the third round. 
A lot of dirty boxing going on here. But Mata Ferry hanging tough in those clinches. There she is, pulls guard. She knows she's got to get to work. Here she goes. Goes for the arm. Trying to walk the legs up, get an angle. Hoffman has to be cognizant. What is that work here? Mata Ferry very active on the bottom end. Hoffman picks him up. submission attempt when somebody lifts you up. It's your job to do that. You got to know that you're in trouble and bail on it. She didn't do that and got slammed and paid the price for it. Out cold. Sarah Coffin has got to be thrilled not only by beating a world-class grappler who gave her a lot of problems, but also doing it in such an emphatic fashion to defend her title. Yeah, great job dealing with Montefiore on the ground also. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of four minutes, 45 seconds in round number three. She is the winner by way of knockout and still the Strike Force Women's Welterweight Champion, the undefeated Sarah Kaufman. You wanted to make a statement in this fight, young lady. I think you just did. Thank you very much. You know, get me on main cards on Showtime, guys. <laughs> I think I deserve it. Put me on there. Thanks to Zuma, my team, Adam Zujak, Greg Jackson, Julie Kedzie for coming out. All my guys that came out from Victoria are awesome. And my sponsors, Clinch Gear. Performance MMA, prettytoughfighter.com, MMARising.com. What about the performance by Roxanne Mataferi? What, what did you think of the fight up until that point? You know, I thought it was a pretty close fight. I um, mean, you know, I think Roxanne was starting to get tired and I could keep my strength up for longer. But, you know, it's a lot of battling up on the cage. And, yeah, I mean, she came out crazy, just like I thought she would. Well, you just made the strike force highlight reel, no doubt about that. And, obviously, no time to relax either, young lady, as you've got... Marlos Kunin dropping down from 145 pounds for the next crack of the title. What do you think about the Dutch submission specialist? Get me in there, I'll fight anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the Strike Force Women's 135 pound champion, the 